to Expedition Sea Nest. In this episode, we travel with our youngest son across the Gulf Stream from Florida to Bimini, Bahamas. Now, if you're anything like me, you like a good visual to explain things. And if you already know this, bear with us for just a minute. And as it was my first time making the crossing, Michael explained to me how the Gulf Stream works. The Gulf Stream travels from south to north along the coast of Florida. We had to wait until the prevailing winds came from essentially the same direction, south, southeast, or southwest. That way, the wind and the current do not oppose each other and create waves. This super cool website shows global wind, current, and wave patterns. I'll put a link to it in the description in case you want to have a peek. Well, it's 4.45, and we're, uh, and we're leaving Rodriguez Key. <laughs> Waves are already splashing up on air. He's on the bow with the light, just making sure we don't get a crab pot wrapped around our, our prop. We're also um, looking for, there's, there's boats out here, derelict boats. There's, uh, there's, there's guys that come in and anchor up and don't have a anchor like that. I mean, so it's, uh, it's kind of crazy. So, you know, you have to have somebody on the bow until we hit some deeper water here. We've got a ways to go. So Eric's going to be spending some time on the front of the boat. How many hours do you think it's going to be for the crossing in this weather? Mm -hmm. uh, our crossing, well, we've got 85 miles. Um, that's our distance as a crow flies from from behind Rodriguez to, uh, to North Bimini. Now, once we get out into the Gulf Stream, that's a three and a half knot current roughly that has been pushing us north. So that's going to move us quicker. I mean, I'm hoping it's, you know, we've got an eight hour, eight hour trip to get there. But we'll see. You know what? Hopefully we'll catch some fish. That's going to take a bit of time too. But as long as we get in before dark, that's all I want. It is critical to keep an eye on the wind and the weather daily. We use several apps and we cross-reference for a bigger picture. We use Navionics, Predict Wind, and local weather forecasts that have radar. There are several others that you can find that are also excellent. There's no land anywhere. I know. There's no land. I think we're lost. <laughs> Some people might think we're crazy making the passage in a tiny boat like this, but people do it on jet skis. I can't imagine how they could do it on a well, jet ski. Well, they do it in the summertime with a group, you know. We're doing it by ourselves in the winter when there's, there's, there's you don't get calm conditions very often. You're lucky to get calm conditions out here. Maybe if you're lucky once a month. Well, maybe we not even lucky. that. We got lucky. If yeah. this is what we consider calm, I think this is pretty calm. Okay. Yeah, this is not bad. This is. We have still got three footers. Maybe there's and with the odd four footer in here, but but it's amazing. You know, you're going six knots when you when we left Rodriguez uh, Island. And when we got up to the uh, to the Florida Straits, as soon as we hit the Gulf Stream, it jumped to eight knots. It was like we just took off. And our amazing that are actually I don't know what that is, but uh, maybe I can't figure this out. But I, the uh, fuel economy jumped too. It was really nice. and now we're so the reason why we didn't leave from Miami is because. 
have to take these waves on the nose all day long to get there. Whereas if I left them for Rodriguez, I get we have them quartering, and even we're kind of just kind of rolling through the uh, through the troughs on them. So we're not getting we're not getting them breaking over the bow too much. So it's a it's a better ride. It's actually a it's probably just as fast to lead from from there, uh, from Rodriguez, just because we're working with the Gulf Stream. Uh, whereas we're just crossing the Gulf Stream when we come from Miami. Yeah, we've only got a 49 mile run, whereas opposed to we had a, what it was like, was it 85? I can't remember. What was it, Eric? It's like an 85 mile run coming from Rodriguez to, uh, to Bimini. And uh, it's a much longer run, but we may get there at the same time just because we're not fighting against the waves and we're, we're not, and we're going with the Gulf Stream. Interesting how it works. Anyways. How's it going, hon? It's going, going well. Oh, so we have, uh, yeah, so our GPS speed right now is, uh, we're doing nine miles an hour. We're, we're kind of, we vary between uh, 8.45 miles an hour to a 9.27 miles an hour. Speed over, uh, yeah, so that's speed over ground. Now, um, our, our arrival time is 3.52, our, di our, dis our distance to destination is 72.2 miles. So we're uh, still got a long ways to go. Uh, it is actually at 7:20 a.m. and uh, it's, it's going to be a beautiful day. It's just not going to be a it's not going to be a comfortable trip. But I mean, if you're going to cross in the winter time, you know you're going to be waiting a long time if you think you're going to get some calm conditions to do that. So you have to be prepared to take some waves. You know, maybe you don't have to take this much, but I mean, this puts us if we can get. We're supposed to expect these conditions again tomorrow, and then we're supposed to get high winds. So if we can get to Bimini, and then we can uh, we can we can we can go through customs and uh, immigration, and uh, and I'm hoping that we can do that all today. That way, there tomorrow morning, we can head to the Berry Islands, and that's another large uh, trip. That's that's 75 miles or something like that. So we'll see. We'll see how we feel. We, you know, we may just stay in Bimini. There's some. We can do some diving there. We can do some uh, fishing there. And just relax too. We can see Bimini. I mean, uh, we don't have a. We don't have a. Uh, a plan, right? We don't. We actually just decided to go to Bimini a few days ago. I mean, we, we don't. We, we thought maybe we'd go to Nassau. Or we, you know, or you know, and then from Nassau maybe to. Uh, um, to the Exumas, but you know what? Let's let's go to the berries. We we met some really nice folks and uh, a boat called Cats Away, and uh, so we're gonna see if we can uh, connect with them in uh, in the Berry Islands and have some fun. Right now we're in a, a collision course with this freighter, but he's a long ways away, and I'm, we're we're gonna stay on course. He's gonna stay on course. And uh, I don't think there's gonna be a problem. He's moving a lot quicker than we are. And uh, he looks pretty small right now, but I think he's farther away than we think. And uh, he's gonna pass by in front of us, so we're good. If we, if we couldn't, we wouldn't even try to get in front of the ship and, and try to jump in front of the thing across. We would have, even if it was farther back there and we think we could have done it, we would have still fallen off and gone around this, this ship. But it's uh, it's not a huge freighter, but it's it's still kind of scary. Yeah, you gotta watch over those things. Oh yeah. Creep up on you. Yeah. But he's gonna pass by us. No, he's gonna pass by us. No problem. I'm I'm glad that you're saying that, but I'm still nervous. <laughs> Probably because I'm driving. Yeah. <laughs> If you were driving, I'd just be totally trusting you and saying, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, no, he's going to be long past us here. The pain, man. Oh, Eric hit his knee on uh, on something. There's the, <laughs> there could be a problem when you're uh, six foot three. 
And what we, what do you do to pass the time on a boat? You try to build, what's that called? A card house. A card, yeah. House of cards. House of cards. Oh. That's crazy. Yeah. Talk about an exercise in frustration. I'm amazed it's still standing. Sushi! Sushi me! Way to go boys! Those are patient. These are these are not very big blackfin, but they are very good eating. They, aren't they beautiful? I think they're yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh! As we neared Bimini, the ocean went from deep blue to a shockingly clear turquoise. I know we've all seen it online, but when you see it in person, it is amazing. Four feet on the we raced the yellow quarantine flag, and after docking, Michael went to sign us into the country. looking for the bloodline but the only way to see the bloodline really is from the other side of the fish so let's get whoa that is a dull knife Eric could you go and get my flay knife on there holy cow I got to sharpen that thing that... <laughs> that's is that the way we bought this thing probably it's just a crappy <laughs> that's that's like it's just a pointy butter knife <laughs> that's all this is <laughs> Oh, what a day. I finally got, we got our, we got, uh, 
uh, we went through, I went through, I have to go through immigration. Um, I, the, the family's not allowed to leave the boat. Um, only the, uh, the master or the captain is allowed to leave the boat um, once they arrive in the Bahamas. And uh, so I went, I had all the paperwork. So I went to immigration and from integration, in immigration, <clears throat> I went to uh, customs where I had to get my cruising papers, which cost me $150. That is, um, this is this is tricky um, because my boat is under 35 feet. It cost me 100. If it was over 35 feet, it would cost me 300 dollars. But that's a really good deal for like three months. And then they have a six month thing. I think it's double that or something like that. Um, yeah, and that includes your fishing license. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's a little bit of walking, but not bad. Let's see. It just it's really hard to to flay the skin off and see the tuna very look how thin that skin is so it's really tricky I know I know you say wow you made Michael made that look really easy yeah <laughs> no one said that <laughs> oh oh you guys didn't say that oh okay <laughs> well I, I've I filleted a few fish in my day I think so we're just getting rid of all the bones and the best way to feel if there's bones is just run you see this there's a center line of bone here so we're doing this like that and doing this like this now this side it's it's hard to see the um, the, the bloodline in it but you don't want to eat the bloodline so especially in the tuna and see this darker? yeah see that see the way it's darker there there's that less light yeah it's you know there's there are small black fin there you can really see that look at the color of that you see that that's still the I can't see it from this angle oh. it's coming. see how dark that bloodline is yeah so you don't want that especially if you want to eat it as sushi or sashimi you want to make sure you see that there it's easy to see that see how dark that is so we're gonna get that cut out And there you go and there is so that's not very much left from there and then you can just cut it into well all depends if you're doing are we doing we're just gonna leave it like this yeah we'll just leave it straight like this what you see this little piece here we cut this off and you see that is that for the cook for the chef oh, for a cook for the oh, yeah so good so mm, blackfin <laughs> blackfin is amazing that's the sushi going girls and boys phenomenal it's it's a production Mom is on the. I'm on the, on the sushi roll. roll. We got the lights on the back too. See if any sharks come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead. Check that out. Hold on, last last roll. Oh, last roll. Okay. Maybe not. It's not perfect, but it's pretty okay. Yeah. Considering I didn't think we were even going to catch anything to make this with, so already. Hey, I'm, hey, hey. What I know. Doing? I should have faith in you. I don't know how many times I've said that. I should trust you. I should have faith in you. Wow. Well. I think no, I was in a hurry I was, rolling that. To be honest with you, I lost faith in me too. I was a hur in a hurry. Is this trash, this stuff yeah. there? Okay. Mmm. This one feels like it doesn't have quite as much tuna, so I'm going to stick tuna on top of tuna toppers. Mm -hmm. So we got a cool clip of a pot of dolphins. We don't know what they are yet, so we'll yeah. look that up tonight. We got some cool footage. Yeah, you guys sure we saw them like 10, jump 10, 15 yeah. feet in the air. They were not very big. I don't know. We we really have to look up to see what species they really are. They, I, I, they look too. They were too small to be a bottlenose. Mm -hmm. I really think so. I've never seen them that no. small before in person. No. Wow, that looks amazing, Eric. Well, I'm gonna go out and see what see if there's uh, see if anything fed on those those yeah those tuna parts that I threw. And I'm gonna catch up on the sushi eating on the sushi eating. Oh my gosh, they're playing some really loud music here. These are the lights that are mounted off my, um, on the back of my trim tabs. Anyways, I think if this music goes every night, I'll be glad I'm only spending the one night here. Well, it's 6.30 in the morning. 
we're still in Bimini. It's, uh, it was our first night in the Bahamas. And it was a good night. I think everyone slept really well. We actually uh, pulled up to the dock here and uh, we plugged in with uh, hydro and we ran the air conditioning throughout the night because there was some a lot of music late in the night and we tried to drown that out with the sound of the uh, air conditioning and it worked pretty good we all slept I think we all slept well I actually haven't talked to either of them yet um, but uh, it's a beautiful morning it's not a quiet place that's for sure there's trucks flying by and roosters making a racket but it certainly is pretty got some really nice lights coming up look at the size of this two masted Feeling this morning? Tired. You sleep okay? Uh, yeah. You joker. I think I slept pretty good. I know I slept till about three o'clock. Here we say. It's gonna be a nice day today. It should be. It should be. It's a little windy this morning. When is it supposed to lay down? We looked at predict wind this morning. Probably around 12:30. We're gonna leave this morning for the Barry Islands. I think we got about a 75-mile passage. And uh, we're not gonna go too early. Um, we're not that big a rush. I think we can make the time up. Actually, I think we can jump up on plane today. That's the plan. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, I was just having a look at the view up here. Oh yeah, you should have uh, been up about half an hour earlier. You would yeah. have seen a beautiful light. Yeah. Sunrise. Yeah. So we're heading out in about half an hour. Yeah, sure. You know, whenever. The wind's kind of heavy right now. Yeah. Um, we can wait a little bit. Doesn't matter to me. We like said we got about a 70 mile, 75 mile, 70 mile, something in that. Um, probably closer to 75 by the time we get around the islands and, mm -hmm. and head back towards, uh, head east towards uh, Barry's. Prior to our departure, I encouraged everyone to stretch their legs and do a quick tour of Alice Town. Much to our surprise, we stumbled upon the Dolphin House, built by Ashley Saunders, a local historian, owner and creator of Dolphin House, and some very interesting tombstones. So, what are we doing? We are putting all the ropes away, and, um, cleaning up and then we're heading down to the Berry Islands which is another whole day of boating but um, there's a weather window now that we uh, figured we wanted to hit and um, and do the mileage today or else we're not going to be able to get down there in the next few days so one more day of travel and then a lot more fun some snorkeling some other stuff yeah so approximately how far is it travel today? Uh, our passage today I think is around 75 miles. 75 miles. It's, uh, it's a good haul and uh, at some point I'm gonna want to have I'm gonna need to jump off and plane because we didn't get going too late today unless we're gonna if we don't try to jump up and plane um, at some point we're gonna come into the berries in the dark and I don't want to come into that area it's really shallow coming in there <clears throat> so uh, so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a tight day but that's okay. If, it, if we make up our time, um, uh, you know, by being on plane and we find a coral head, we'll, uh, we'll stop and see if we can get some lobster off of it. Due to the weather, we were only in Bimini overnight. 
Hopefully next time we will have more time to visit the people and the local landmarks. And I uh, can then learn more about the history of this charming little island that was a refuge to pirates and rum runners and famous people such as Ernest Hemingway and Dr. Martin Luther King. Thanks for watching. And if you like this episode, please subscribe.